All right, and welcome back to The Lead Word. This is your host, Trey Dalbert, along with me as always, Chad Bauman. Today is September 10th, 2021. Uh, I guess the new sort of schedule for the show is we're going to be recording these on Friday. We will go over the Thursday night game and then do a little preview for the upcoming week of the season. So, Chad, how are you? What's going on? Doing great. Just want to add with like the whole scheduling thing. Uh, whoever ends up being the video person again, I mean, Hunter's been doing it. Maybe he's might be too busy. I don't know, but it's important that these are going to have to go out on Saturday because if we put them out after Sunday, who fucking gives a shit, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, especially that should the be format. the schedule. Yep. Um, really excited though. You know, we're, we're like a month and a few days away from Vegas here. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> I thought you were going to jump right into, well, football is back, but. I mean, it is, but I mean, yeah. cool, man. I mean, I, I've i I've never been to Vegas, even though technically I have been to Vegas. So, like, I never left the airport, but I have oh. not actually been to Vegas. I, uh, I've i I've only seen it from the airport. So I think really everyone, excited. well, I think the people that are going are looking forward to it. The, the list of people that are going, it's dwindling. It's not going to be that many people there, actually, but it's going to be fun. Yeah, definitely. And it, I mean, coincides nicely with football season. I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe we'll go. I don't know what the whole plan is, but maybe a Raiders game. I, I know you're dialed in for some kind of hockey game out there. I don't know. Well, we, I was looking at prices for tickets, and I don't think I'm willing to pay the Raider tickets. Thousand uh, dollars for nosebleeds. Don't love that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> New stadium, I guess. I don't know, but. A thousand dollar for nosebleeds, so I uh, I think I'm gonna pass on the Raider tickets. That that must mean that no one's buying them. Like th- there's no reason why they would be that high. Uh, we could uh I'll, for I'll, like the I'll, worst seats. That's like a thousand dollars. It's bad. I'll have uh I'll have my my mom works for the state of New Jersey. I'll have her check out their website because she can actually get discounts on that kind of stuff. Okay, and maybe they'll only be like five hundred dollars for nosebleeds. Does that include Does that include hockey? Too or no? Yeah, she can get all kinds of stuff off of that website. Okay. So I'll, it, I'll have her look I, into it. All right. That you want to go see like the Blue Man Group or something like that? Check them out. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, so I'm sure you were thrilled with the result on Thursday because Dallas looked good but found a way to lose, which is just the perfect way for Chad to celebrate a Cowboys loss. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when fucking <laughs> Chris Godwin fumbled the fucking football inside the five yard line, I was absolutely sick. And then the Cowboys started driving. And I'm like, oh, they're going to win this fucking game. But, you know, good old fashioned fucking Dallas blew the lead, held the shit out of Vita Bay. Like even on that very the last play before the field goal at the end there, like they like he got held like three consecutive plays in a row. It's He's insane. a monster in the middle. Oh, he's an absolute fucking bowling ball. Yeah. Like I, like I, 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 you know, going back a ways, you know, Chris Martin was in on Tampa and he got bullied. And I remember at the time, and I, I said this, I was like, look, I mean, maybe people were mean to him, but as like a grown adult, I don't feel like you can be bullied because fuck, I can get in my car and leave fucking I like as an adult, like when you're a kid and you have to go to school, Bullying is a real thing because you have to be there for eight fucking hours a day. There's no HR department that you can really go to that'll fire people. So, like, but as an adult, you don't really get bullied. I actually saw someone, a grown man, be bullied for sick night, which I never thought was possible. Like, I've never seen another grown man just physically pick up, bench press another grown man 12 feet, you know, in the air, which is what he did to what was uh, the... Cowboy Center, Chris Martin, right? Uh, Tyler Biotish. Whatever the fucking guy. Well, oh, Chris Martin was injured. Zach Martin's hurt, yeah. Zach Martin, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hurt. The, the guy they had filling in looked like he might as well be playing Pop Warner. Connor Williams, yeah, he's not good. Connor Williams, that's that's who it was. Yeah, he's not good. I, I, he might as well be playing Pop Warner. Like I, I, I would imagine he'd struggle with a fucking thirteen-year-old. He was a he was the left tackle at Texas, and they moved him to guard because he's too small. And then he looks really small at guard. Vita Vita is so strong yeah. that he makes strong people look not strong. Like I, <laughs> that's insane. 
Yeah, he's 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 pretty good. My my number one takeaway to this game, and I know I I I said this in the Slack today, I quite don't understand how everyone's talking point today is wow, look at that Prescott. My number one takeaway to the game was Ezekiel Elliott looks slow and out of shape and just awful. Um, I don't know. I don't think I didn't think he looked out of shape. He uh, does not look good. Like his, it, I don't think his body looks good. I, I, I like if I'm Ezekiel Elliott fantasy owner, I would literally be panicking to get rid of this guy, and I wouldn't even care that I'm selling low. I don't know. I, I, it's hard for me to say just because like Tampa's defense is so good, and their 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 front seven is so good. Like they are, no question. But there was that one pitch, that was a defining moment for the. There was a, a pitch. They were down in the red area. And two years ago, Zeke Elliott makes that guy miss, and he scores a touchdown. And last night, he looks slow, and he just never had a chance at making the guy miss. I forget who who it was that tackled him on that pitch play to go into the end zone. He scores that two years ago, no problem. It was the it was the cornerback, wasn't it, Dean? It may have been him. One of the backups. It, it was one, one of the. Of the it was one of there. the secondary guys. I don't know which secondary guy it was. I forget. But two years ago, he makes that guy miss no problem. He's a little tiny guy. He falls into the end zone. I mean, he could, how, how bad and slow did he look? And Tony Pollard is very much involved in the offense. Very much. Uh, I mean, I'd, yeah, I mean, as bad as Zeke was, I, I don't put the loss on, on anything. I mean, yeah, maybe there's a hand in it with Zeke not being as explosive as we've seen him be in the past. Did he I look mean, any better than Leonard Fournette yesterday? No. But to be fair, Zeke has always been a volume kind of carry guy, and he had maybe five carries the entire first half. That's that's true. They did not run the football enough, but it wasn't even, working. They didn't even yeah. try. But that's the thing. Yeah. He, Zeke has always been a volume guy. He's always been a volume guy. Like, the first couple quarters, he'll get you, like, two, three yards. Maybe he'll shoot off for five if there's good blocking up front. But he's always been a, I'm going to be a better rusher as the game goes on, as I touch the ball more. Like, he had five carries in the entire first half, I think it was. Some shit like that. I think he ended the night with, like, ten total carries. So, I mean, if anything, I, I, I mainly put this loss on the coaching for the Cowboys. And, I mean, That's maybe I'm being a dead horse again, as always. Mike fucking McCarthy. But, dude, if Mike McCarthy knows, even fucking has any kind of semblance or idea or fucking understanding of what fucking field position is... The Buccaneers, they don't win the game. True. Like literally, if he either I I obviously maybe it's possible the the the, the Buccaneers go down and score. And Zerline kind of screwed but him. It was a 60 yard field goal. I'm not even what? kicking it. Yeah, but I mean the he missed like a 32 well, yard or something. And, and he missed the extra point too. Yeah. But to be fair, he had already missed an extra point at this point. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he missed the, one of the field goals. I, I know he overall missed two field goals. Maybe he missed one of the field goals already. He and did. We're, tr we're trotting did. him out there for a 60-yarder. It's yeah, obviously that was... not his fucking night. Sit your ass on the bench. And and the worst part was Tampa didn't even score in that, and they sh probably should have. You mean after they missed the field goal? Yeah. No, they did. No, I don't think they I did. Thought, no, that wasn't that when they – because he missed the field goal with, like, the 60-yarder with, like – uh with like three minutes left and then right no, after that was, that, that, that was the bomb to Antonio Brown, wasn't it? No, I don't think you're right. I, I, I don't mean, think they I scored be, on that. I, I, I thought it was, I could be wrong because I, I was watching the game while I was working. So maybe I missed some things. And if we had a producer, I just have him look it up, but we're not going to get a producer <laughs> until next week. So I'm going to look it up real quick. Just to double check. All right. I'm Tampa. pretty positive, but it was a terrible decision. Absolutely. And to, and to me, that was a game Dallas should have won by probably double digits. They win the turnover battle four to one. They outgain them. I should actually look at what the third downs were because it, it felt like the Cowboys were moving the chains almost constantly. Uh, I'd love to know what the I, and third I, down I, I don't know were. if they did or not, but I, feel, I also felt like Dallas had the ball longer too. Dallas was nine of seventeen on third down. I mean, that's pretty. That's not a bad percentage. 
what was uh what about the Patriots? Tampa was Patriots Tampa was five of eleven. They just weren't they weren't picking up the chains quite like Dallas was. Dallas had more yards. Uh, they didn't have quite as many yards per play, but <laughs> how how many how many giveaways did Tampa have? Ronald Jones terrible fumble. Uh, there was an interception by Brady that wasn't really his fault. On I want to say it was a screen pass. I can't quite remember, but that was another play. Great field position. They had bad uh, red zone area execution. They weren't making their kicks. I thought McCarthy made dumb decisions. That That's a game Dallas should have won by double digits. And how many breaks did Tampa give them? Godwin fumbles going into the end zone. I mean, <laughs> Dallas had every break in the world, and they still found a way to lose. I'm more worried about Dallas today than I was before the game. No, you're right. I, I, was, I was wrong with the missed field goal thing. Um, but it was still a terrible decision. Tampa should have absolutely at least gotten three out of that. You're right. But, I mean, I don't know. For me, it's uh, – I, I, I don't know how – how they lose that game. Again, I mean in, in Tampa, they they were like they were bleeding guys in their second in their secondary. Oh. They were pulling fans out of the stands like, hey, high school football, college football, any experience at all? Great, suit up. Amari Cooper was quite literally open on every single route he ran. All three wideouts were open every fucking play. <laughs> every play. <laughs> and, and 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 to Dak's credit, his only interception was a it was on CD Lamb. You can't yeah. blame Dak for that. I'm not. No, I'm not saying he had a bad game at all. But those fucking receivers were a problem yesterday. Like, and and I, I want to revisit my 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 division pick. Like, this is exactly what I was talking about when I picked Dallas to win the division. Yeah, their secondary has issues. They, they maybe should have gotten some kind of corner upgrade. Their safeties eh. in. In fairness, in fairness, they picked a corner in the second round. He didn't play last night. But front seven, really good. Fine. Michael yeah, Parsons. Fine. I mean, yeah, he played really poorly. Um, there's even that clip, and we'll get Hunter, whoever does the the editing, maybe get them to clip that in where like he's. It's a play action pass, and he literally just gets in the spin cycle. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but I mean, I outside of like, outside of like their secondary, they're so good on paper. But then you get to the Mike McCarthy of it all, and it's like you're the reason why they're gonna lose. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I still think they'll win the division, but it'll be I hard. I think it's gonna be harder for them than it should be. Because you know what, man? I mean, I look at the Eagles, they're, they're, and I'll talk to them about them more a little bit later. They're not as good as this Dallas football team is. Not close. Nobody is. Nobody is in this division. <laughs> not even close. I think the only reason why they might have a chance is because, I mean, right now, Sirianni's the wild card. Either he's going to be as bad as Mike McCarthy and we're going to be fucking screwed, or he's going to be better than Mike McCarthy and we'll have a chance to win a couple games here and there. I, I like the Giants. I, they're not talented enough on offense for me. They're not. Not close. But I almost feel as if I have a head coach that I think I trust. I think they should be able to run the football. I think they should be able to play respectable defense. And I think that's enough. I don't know. I don't think it's enough because I, I, I feel like this the talent of Dallas – is shining through despite Mike McCarthy. Like, I, I think if you have any other team on the other side of the field, any other quarterback, but, you know, Tom Brady, and you know, 44-year-old with 90,000 years of experience on the other sideline, any other quarterback, I, I think Dallas wins last night. So it's, it's, it's hard for me to... I mean, as much as I hate Dallas, as much as I hate Mike McCarthy, they should have won that game. But I, I no think question. As, as bad as Mike McCarthy it, can, was, can I say you, something? You have to give you have to give Tampa Bay their credit for having just fucking Tom Brady, cool as a cucumber back there, just like okay, 
yeah, you you gave me a minute thirty left, so I'm gonna go uh, gonna go down there with way more than enough time that I need. To kick Can I say goal. something? Jason Garrett wins that game last night. I don't maybe. Maybe just because Jason Garrett probably commits more to the run. Jason Garrett commits more to the run, and he actually stays out of the way. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do we have anything else to go over in this game? I just had two main things. Zeke, I thought, looked horrible. And good God, their receivers are scary. Like, When terrifying. they catch the ball. Yes. When Land decides he wants to catch the ball, I mean, I thought Cooper was insane yesterday. That guy, that guy could not be covered. I, I mean, but to be fair, that's kind of how he's been ever since he put on the Cowboys uniform. Yeah, he, he's every fucking play, he's wide open. Yeah, like you can just throw, close your eyes. All right, fuck it, Amari's over there somewhere. He's open all the time. All the time. Like I, I like, thought even get, I thought Gallup looked great too. Yeah, but I mean, he's kind of like uh, like fades in the background because like ever like there's just like it was like oh you 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 cover that guy okay well we got this guy I thought Gallup made some great he's plays he's covered well we got him too <laughs> yeah I mean like I said I just I I think you know not probably gonna do anything significant in the playoffs but Dallas is like hey, they get rid of Mike McCarthy they're a real contender. <laughs> Yeah, but you know who they'll hire, they'll hire Marvin Lewis next. Look, man, the longer <laughs> Dallas goes without, the, I, if I can die without ever watching Dallas win a Super Bowl, I think I'm okay with it. Okay. Because <laughs> the last time Dallas won a Super Bowl, I think I was like three years old. So I don't really remember. Yeah. I wasn't really like into football then. So yeah, I don't, it doesn't really count. So, I mean, if well, you're we, fine. As, lo- as long as Jerry Jones is alive, you're fine. Jerry Jones might outlive me. <laughs> I mean, with, with, with his high rate of income, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's not impossible to think that he couldn't make it to 200. <laughs> that's like a Ricky Bobby line. That's that's where I pulled it from. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, do you, you want to go ahead and start on the... Uh, the yeah, let's get into game the game this week. I'll just jump right into it. Uh, I don't quite understand... Why the Carolina Panthers are only three and a half point favorites at home against the New York Jets in what should be a Sam Darnold rivalry game. Zach Wilson's really fucking good. That's fine. I'm just kidding. I can't quite understand why at home in a game where we know Sam Darnold's been licking his chops and Robbie Anderson has been licking his chops and Matt Rule who interviewed with the Jets has been licking his chops to play against this scrub team and they're only a three and a half point favorite how why make it make sense see I mean and and that's the thing that I I kind of like I agree with you last year the Jets were bad, like really bad. They, I mean, they had the first overall pick. I mean, Carolina, second. they, yeah, second, whatever, first, same difference. They were bad. They won less than two fucking games. Or maybe they won two games. They won two games. They won less than or equal to two games. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, like, fuck, dude, they had the second overall pick. Carolina, they weren't fucking great. I'm, I'm sure they had. I'm pretty sure they had a top ten pick this year too. But they had what seven wins last year? I don't know. I I know for a fact they're they had a like a really bad win loss record in one possession games. Like they were in a lot of games. They just didn't really close the deal. Right. I mean, my point is, is like I don't. If if you have a team that's if you have a team that's as bad as the Jets, I don't think they should. Uh, their their line shouldn't be less than seven. You're points telling me Carolina's not going to beat them by more than a fucking field goal? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think if you have At a home? team as if you have a team as bad as the, well, and that's another thing because don't you get like two two or three points automatically just for being home? Yes. They they think it's like oh Panthers Jets, 
even let's just give them three because they're at home. What? Yeah, I, 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 I think any any team that's playing who had the first pick this year? It was uh Jackson. Jacksonville. So unless Jacksonville is playing the Jets, it should never be the line should be always at least a touchdown. At least. Unless uh, Jacksonville or Houston. Like Right. So we fucking uh, Carolina can't beat them by more than a field goal. I, I don't I, buy I know, it. Man. So I mean maybe they're just like who are these the people in Vegas are just like, you know what? Sam Darnold, not really good. That's the thing. Zach they Wilson, think really, really good. They think they're going to be bad. They think the Panthers are going to be bad. Their their win total, their over under win total is like six and a half. Well, I mean, maybe they're overestimating Zach Wilson. They're like, hey, this guy's no. I'm this- saying that's Carolina. Like Vegas has Car- the Carolina Panthers is like a six win team. I don't like- see that. I'd like to see their schedule, but yeah, I mean. Like you said, they were they were in a lot of the games they lost. They just, you know, kind of. I think they're up. getting a, a quarterback upgrade. McCaffrey essentially didn't play all last year. Right. I like Carolina this year. Not I enough. Know why? To, not enough to make them my division my division pick this year, but I like them enough. I I just don't see how they're not competitive. Uh. I think they have an underrated defense. Not it's not great, but it's still I think underrated. I think their defense is getting really. I, I think their defense is actually kind of good. Well, that's what I said. I, I I think their defense is underrated. I don't think it's great. And it's young. They you remember what was it last year? They used all eight of their draft picks on the defensive side of the ball, and some right. of them are hits. Like Derek Brown's nasty. Jeremy Chin can play. Well, like I said, I, I think people underrate their defense. I think uh, for whatever reason, if you have a bad record, no matter how good your defense plays, people automatically assume you have a bad defense because you have a bad record, which I don't think for Carolina that's the case. I think people look at them last year. They're like, oh, they're a seven-win team. They can't have a good defense. But no, they have a good defense. They McCaffrey really... was hurt, and, and Bridgewater really didn't. Right. They didn't have an offense done. last year. Yeah. Like, if you take McCaffrey out of that offense, it's like the whole fucking thing goes downhill. So I think he's healthy right now. I right. think they have a quarterback upgrade. Their defense is young. I think they added things. Like even uh this offseason, Hassan Reddick's gonna get sacks. They didn't have him last year. I I I mean, okay, if you were making the line for this game, Jets, Jets, Panthers, what would you what would you set the line at? I think they'll win by double digits. Okay, so about at least 10 points. I would make it 10, yeah. Okay. And I, 10's a lot, but I, I don't I, see I, how I don't they see don't how, smoke them. Well, I was going to say, I, I don't see how the Jets score. <laughs> like, like who who's who's on the Jets that you're like, man, that guy's going to get in the fucking end zone? Like, yeah, I mean, they got Zach Wilson, and, you know, I wasn't high on him at the beginning of the draft process, but after I saw his pro day, I was like, okay, this guy can fucking sling it. I think but he like, can play. I, I mean, but. to quote Giselle, to quote Giselle, he can't throw the fucking ball to himself. Who's, who's like, Corey Davis is going to fucking steamroll Carolina by himself? Well, he's not getting fucking open, I can tell you that. Maybe he no. wins a jump ball. Well, how the fuck are they getting into the red zone? Kevin Coleman's their starting running back right now. I mean, he's not terrible, but who's <laughs> the fucking offensive lineman? Who's blocking for him? <laughs> They can't I think their left ball. tackle's actually hurt, isn't he? I don't know. I think Becton's hurt. I mean, he's yeah. I mean, he's like the lone star on their offensive yeah. line, but everyone else outside of left tackle sucks. Yeah. So like, they can't run the ball to the left side of the fucking field every fucking play. And and this is a defense that got hit with some injuries here. Like they signed Carl Lawson this offseason. He's done for the year. He was going to be the only guy that was getting sacks. I just I don't like I said I'm not, obviously they're not going to get shut out but Chad who the fuck are the, are the Jets corners who who's guarding Robbie Anderson DJ Moore and Terrace Marshall this weekend I don't know who the fuck are their corners uh, they're going to call up Darrell Revis I don't think <laughs> like, that's probably an upgrade over whatever they have but I don't seriously know. who the fuck are their corners I, I don't know <laughs> I legitimately don't know that's why I said. If they they could call up Darrell Revis, he could probably be an upgrade over whoever they got out there. It's crazy. 
I, I it's a valid point with with you know the line should I, I don't I, I think it's a valid point the the Panthers are gonna run away with this I don't think it's gonna be close like I said I I, I can't see the Jets scoring a touchdown like when I try to imagine it like 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 it's kind of like I imagine like oh Jets player in the end zone but then when it like zooms into like the number and the nameplate it's like there's, it's just blank. Like, I don't, like, who was getting in the end zone? I don't, I don't, I don't get this line. I, I, for the life of me, I'm like, oh, this, maybe, maybe this is a sucker bet. And then I just continue to remember, no, like, people think Carolina's bad. I, well, is McCaffrey like, no, he's fine. I don't, <laughs> it's like, Maybe maybe somebody like from Vegas is like gonna be waiting outside the stadium for him. And they're gonna clip him in the ankle with the fucking crowbar before the game starts. I don't know. Maybe they know something we don't. I don't. I don't understand it. Uh, any anything else, Carolina Jets? No, <laughs> I just don't get it. Okay. Um. My my first game that I want to talk about here is I I want to talk about the Rams playing Chicago. Uh, and I feel like this is a big, big game for us, kind of like set the tone for the season for the Rams. Uh, Chicago offensively, <clears throat> they're more Matt Nagy at this point than they are anything else. Uh, I mean, yes. they got a, I mean, they got a couple guys, you know, Allen Robinson. Uh, By the way, when you say that, I think <clears throat> what you mean, and most people don't agree with you, but I think what you mean, and I agree with you, is that Matt Nagy's clever and he comes up with these weird trick plays, but it's not enough because they don't have a real quarterback right now. Or, or not even this. I wouldn't even say trick plays necessarily. I would just say schemes really well. Yeah. So like route combinations, uh, blocking assignments, things like that. Yeah. He's really good at that kind of shit. The X's and O's of it. So that's yes, that's exactly what I mean. Yes. Um, I mean, like I said, Allen Robinson criminally wasted like everywhere he fucking goes like can we get Allen Robinson yeah. a real fucking quarterback Justin Fields I he's not starting I'm pretty sure they named Andy Dalton right the starter yes I mean maybe once Justin Fields gets in there as a starter he'll get an upgrade but to be fair Justin or uh Justin Fields still a rookie quarterback so there's going to be growing pains but like I said I'm coming at this from the other angle just like for the Rams this is a really I, I like this for their offense because it's going to really set kind of like the, the litmus test for us because Chicago's got a really – as bad as they are on offense, they got a really great defense. We'll see so which like, Bears defense shows up. Right. I mean, it's early in the year, so they're going to be firing on all cylinders. The <laughs> the I, 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 I the Mitch Trubisky effect, I know he's not there anymore, but that Mitch Trubisky effect is it hasn't set in yet. It's a new year, new promise, everything. So, <laughs> you know, their fingers are crossed. But – yeah. Uh, the, what, what I want to say is, is that... And this line, this line, seven and a half. Big line. Right. But for the Bears, they have a really good and balanced defense. Really good front seven. You know, uh, Alec Ogletree, Khalil Mack. Um, their defensive end, uh, what's his face? Hold on. Robert Quinn's not so good anymore. Not Quinn, the other guy. Uh, they have Akeem Hicks, kind of plays all over uh, yeah, the place. Yeah, Akeem so. Hicks. That's that's who I was thinking of. So Akeem Roquan Hicks Smith. is pretty good. Roquan Smith is pretty good. Uh, Eddie Jackson in the secondary is really good. So I'm looking at it like, okay, we came into the season and we said Matt Stafford finally got a good good team around him. We're going to see some big things. N then then Cam Akers gets hurt, and we're like, okay, maybe Cam Akers is going to affect how, how good this team is going to be. Hey, I mean, Daryl Henderson, he's – as good as he's been for, for LA the last couple of years, you know, um, filling in is kind of their change of pay power, power runner. I don't see him running really well against a really good uh, Chicago front seven. But what I can not wait to see is how good is Matt Stafford going to be? Is he going to be able to, you know, I mean, hang in the pocket and, and be the, as good of a player as he was with Detroit it, with LA? And I love the fact that we're getting this really good defense against him week one of the season. I, I can't wait to see how he performs because if he performs really well, that's just telling us like, hey, man, L.A., they might be in the Super Bowl later this year. I'm with you. I This is what the one game I'm like, I have no idea what's going to happen here. Like, I, I couldn't tell you. And I actually think there's a chance the Bears outright win the game. I had no idea what's going to happen in this game. But, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's They could. 
because if, if their defense shows up and they're able to get to Stafford and make him uncomfortable and he doesn't play well, well, I, I think LA's running game is out of the question. I, I don't think Daryl Henderson is going to be able to get going. Maybe he'll get some cleanup touchdowns if they get into the red zone, but between the 20 yard lines, I don't think he's going to be very effective. If they're going to win, it's going to be on the arm of Matt Stafford. And Dalton's not great, but if their defense keeps him in it, he can win this game. He's, he's good enough. He'll get you to the yeah. playoffs. Might yeah. not get you a playoff win, but he'll get you to the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was Marvin Lewis. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Anything else on this game, Chad? No, just really excited. I, I want to see how they perform against a really good defense. I want to see Matt Stafford finally come out and be like, Detroit was fucking holding me back. I don't have Calvin Johnson, but everybody sucks in Detroit. Outside of that guy, everybody fucking sucked in Detroit. I want to jump to my team, and they play Monday night, Baltimore Ravens against the Oakland Las Vegas Raiders. I think this is an interesting game, Chad. You, you can take the Raiders out of Oakland, but you can't take the Oakland out of the Raiders, Trent. Fair. I, I think this is an interesting game because while the Raiders are not good, they are home. And for whatever reason, it does feel like that black hole on like a prime time game. Their fans can make it interesting. I'm not saying that the Raiders necessarily win the game, but I do think this is an important game for Baltimore. Well, we we might actually get to see Lamar play fucking running back this week. Who else is going to do it? <laughs> I think this is an important game for Baltimore because I don't think they can afford to get off to a slow start. They lost Dobbins. They lost Edwards. They lost Justice Hill. They have some guy named Tyson Williams who I didn't think was going to make the roster as their starting running back. Chad, no. he played for three colleges. No. They, they won't have him. He's going to tear his ACL tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he played for three colleges. He went to North Carolina, transferred to South Carolina, then transferred to BYU. He's 25. He's never played a snap in the NFL. Well, they got Le'Veon Bell, too. Is <laughs> he doing anything for you? And Devonta Freeman. And now Latavius Murray. But I think... Did they sign him today? They signed him today, but I don't think he's going to play this week. I would... I would suit him up. Like, just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, who, who's better? I think... Le'Veon I Bell, think... at this point, I think he's shot... I think they said, yeah, I think they said they didn't get him in the building in time, so he's not going to be able to play this week. Oh, so that's like a league rule thing, then. Yeah. I was going to say, if they're concerned about him not using the playbook, just fuck. Lamar just needs to tell him in the huddle, like, okay, this is what you're doing. Like, fuck it. We we used to do, I mean, obviously it's the NFL, but we used to do that shit in fucking high school. Like, we'd, yeah, get a, I, we'd be on JV and we'd get some guy comes in the huddle and it'd be like, the defensive coordinator, uh, Coach Tarsi, just be like, just just tell him what to do on every play. Like, I don't okay, think coach. they got him in the building in time. I don't think he can play. Okay, okay. It's a league rule thing. That's different. I, I I was thinking they were just like, hey, we can't, we haven't got, you know, hasn't had enough time to look at the playbook kind of deal. But if it's, if it's a league rule, okay, that makes sense. And here's another underrated part of it. So they, they say, ooh, we're getting weapons for Lamar. Well, the guy they picked in the first round, Rashad Bateman's not playing either. So they're going to go out there with Sammy Watkins, Tyson Williams, Mark Andrews is still there. And I'm not quite sure who their other starting receiver is going to be. Is Marquise Brown hurt? I, yeah, you're right. So it'll be Marquise. Yeah. I I think he's their best receiver at all. Yes. Okay. So they'll have Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews, Sammy Watkins, and no name running backs. But Lamar can't hit any of them. So it doesn't matter. They better get off to a. This is ha, this has to be a win for Baltimore. This can't be. Oh, we're injured. We don't really know what we are. We come in slow. We we drop a game to the Raiders. No big deal. They they can't lose this game. Like if anyone's going to take the Ravens seriously, they have to win this game. I I really don't know how this game would go because I'm I, the more I think about it. And again, Chickster is one valid point that he's ever made. Derek Carr can carve you up. He can cut yes, up. Yes, he defense. can. 
Yes, he can. The problem is, is no matter how good Derek Carr plays, that defense is going to play just as terrible. So, like, yes, as 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 bad as the the Ravens' problems with their injuries and everything has been, you know what? How do you? I mean, how do you not score on this Raiders defense? And I, I feel I'm like not. The Ravens' defense is good enough to get some stops. But, I mean, if Carr is firing on all cylinders, maybe he can just outscore. I don't know. I'm not sure the Ravens' offense is good enough to just go down and win a shootout game against Eric Carr. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if they, if their defense can get a few stops, they should win. And I don't – I don't. I mean, I would I – would And it's a hard. weird thing, right? This I think the Raiders' fan base – is a fan base that shows up first game of the year, prime time Monday night. Gruden's gonna have them fired up. They can't get off to a slow start and lose this game. I I feel like though I feel like if it's me, I'm more willing to trust the Ravens defense can get a few stops against the Oakland offense than the Oakland defense can get a few stops against the Ravens offense. I'm not sure they're good on offense. You mean the Ravens? Yes. I, they don't really have to be good. That, they got to be something. They, I don't they, know what they are. They could be average, and I still think they're better than the Ravens defense. Or Raiders defense, excuse me. I'm not sure they're average. Their calling card is running the football. And a year ago, they had Mark Ingram, Gus Edwards, and J.K. Dobbins. They had three backs that were studs. Right now... I don't know if they have any that are even okay. I mean, they still have a solid offensive line, though. Do they? They lost the one guy, but then they brought in the other guy from Kansas City. Who'd they bring in from Kansas City? They lost the, They lost Orlando Brown to Kansas City. That's is that a problem. I, is that what I'm thinking of? Yes, that's a problem. They did sign a tackle, but... Uh, the guy they signed is washed up Alejandro Villanueva, who I'm not sure can play anymore. I'm not sure their offensive line is good. I mean, Ronnie Staley is pretty good. Yes. Kevin yes. Zeitler's not terrible. I mean, he's pretty good, too. Old. I mean, old. Oh, he's old, but he's good. Tom Brady's fucking old, but how did that turn out? Like, I don't want to don't give me old anymore. I'm done. I don't give a fuck. You could be 99 if you're in the NFL. You're the greatest fucking player ever. Tom Brady has completely changed my mind. Okay, until, who who, until who else on the me, offensive line do you trust? Uh, they don't have Yonda anymore. They don't have Orlando Brown anymore. This is not the same offensive line. Villanueva, he was uh he was the he was with the the Steelers, wasn't he? Yeah, and they cut him for good reason. I mean, he was good until last year. Last year, he was awful. Right, but before that, he was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, maybe last year's the outlier. Maybe he comes back and he's better again. I mean, if, if that happens, you got three out of five right there. I'm just saying, I, I'm not even trying to, and I am a hater of my team. I'm not even trying to be a hater. With all these injuries, I think there's a chance they come out slow, rusty, don't look good and they can't afford to lose this game. I, I You play I, the Raiders, it's got to be a win on your schedule. I I would still trust the Ravens to beat the Raiders. I still trust them. Like I said, I, I would, as bad as your offensive problems are, as bad as your injuries are right now, I would still take that offense over this Raider, Ra Raiders defense. And you know who they play next week? Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get smashed then, but... They I mean, can't lose this game to the Raiders. I don't think he will. I really don't. Like I said, I feel like even if Derek Carr is firing on all cylinders and he's playing his best football, I still think the Ravens' defense can do just enough so that your offense can win a game. The schedule's not easy. Now, week three, they do play Detroit, but week four in denver early season in denver is a tough place to play true i mean but i i mean again, following week they get indianapolis you, following week chargers let me ask you this they because can't I, lose I, the raiders I, let me ask you this because i i kind of said this about the jets i can't see anyone on their offense scoring a touchdown i mean 
Is there anybody on the Raiders defense where you're like, yeah, man, that guy can make some plays? Is there Max anybody? Cr Max Crosby. Okay, I'll give you one guy. <laughs> I'll give you one guy. I think that's all I got for you. Okay, I'll give you yeah. one guy. Alex. Oh, I should bring this up. They, Alex they, is gonna, they signed. Alex, Alex is going to see watch this episode. He's gonna be like, what the fuck? They signed Yannick Ngakwe, so the Ravens lost him. He's a new Raider. He can play. Okay. I don't know. Okay, maybe. <laughs> Maybe you might be in some trouble. I, I still think the Ravens will be okay. But all right, I mean, don't I mean, say I didn't warn you. Okay, X's and O's though. X's and O's. I, I just, and I'm not. They may they may find a way to win this game, but don't say I didn't warn you that this game comes down to the wire. John John Gruden gets a lot of like. I mean, maybe not so much now, but I feel like people kind of like they hold up John Gruden. They're like, oh, he won the Super Bowl. He he's a coach. He knows football. Blah blah blah. I feel like John Gruden isn't so much of an X's and O's coach as he is just a, a we're going to do conditioning until we're better than everybody else kind yeah, of coach. Yeah, but that's a guy you don't want to see on week one. I'd like to see him on week 12 when the team has already quit. Maybe that's fair. I still think you'll be. I, I, so you're, I you're, think, I think Gruden's a good rah-rah guy. Stop trying to convince me that you're going to lose I think, the game. I think, the, I think Raiders are, okay. the Raiders are a team I don't want to see week one. I'd like to see them week 13 when they're like 4-11. and 11. And I didn't do the math correctly there, but I don't care. It's okay. I, I yeah. still think they're going to be fine. I think the Ravens will win. I think you'll be okay. All right. One good, one more game for you, Chad. One more. Yep. Uh, so my game obviously is Eagles, Rave, or Eagles, uh, Falcons. Um, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent convinced the Eagles are going to win this game. For a couple, I don't know reasons. how you could be. How how could you be? For a couple reasons. Uh, one, the Falcons all of a sudden after one draft have a really really good tight end. The Eagles are not capable. Ever since they let go of um, what is his name? He's a linebacker. He went to Texas. He plays for Arizona now. Uh, Hicks, Jordan Hicks. Yeah, ever since they let go of Jordan Hicks, they haven't been able to cover tight ends to save their life. And Atlanta all of a sudden has... We do, have, we do have a little bit of a breaking news. Oh, yeah? I, I don't know if it's like super breaking news. Lyle Collins just got suspended. Five games. Must have been steroids or something. I would, yeah, I'd have to assume it's some kind of substance thing because I don't yeah, think there he it did is. any... I'm, he I'm did. scrolling through right now. Substance abuse policy, five games. Not great. I was going to say, I didn't see him do anything in the game last night that would have warrant a suspension. But of course, I didn't, I didn't watch the All-22, so maybe it was something off the camera. But yeah, I mean... He's a very good right tackle. That's that's rough. For for a team that obviously does not want to run the ball right now and is throwing the ball 60 times a game, uh, you need as many offensive linemen as you can get. Um Zach Martin, how long has he gone for? He's he's back. It was a COVID thing. Oh, it was a, so he'll be playing next week. I mean, that's good. I mean, it, <laughs> maybe that's how their season is going to go. The Cowboys are going to lose one guy for a week and then have him back the next week. Uh, yeah, it's not great, but I think they'll be okay. It it should it shouldn't really stop them from winning the division. Okay. Um, but back to the game. Like I said, Falcons, all of a sudden, they've got a pretty good tight end, and the Eagles can't cover tight ends for shit. The Eagles have one good cornerback. Uh, Didn't Tyler Higby tear them up last year? For the Rams? Yeah. It's possible. They, I mean, he, they got torched by, like, every fucking wide receiver. Uh, I mean, the only, the only cornerback you can really trust in this team right now is Darius Slay. But, I mean, there's going to be times where he's just not going to be able to match up against Calvin Ridley. Like, there's going to be times they might put Wrigley, or they might put uh, Wrigley in the slot. Ridley, excuse me, in the slot. You know, Slay's not going to be playing in the slot. I, I mean, and, and traditionally, the Eagles don't play the Falcons well. No, they don't. 
Like they played very poorly against the Falcons. Honestly, really the entire, with the exception of the Carolina Panthers the last few years, when they play the NFC South, the Eagles fucking suck. They haven't been good against Tampa Bay. They haven't been good against the Saints. They haven't been good against uh, the Falcons. The only team that they've beaten consistently in this division is the fucking Panthers. And uh, you know what, man? I, I really want Jalen Hurts to play well, but I mean, he, for me, until I see him play well, he's still a wild card. I don't know what I'm going to get from Jalen Hurts. And then he, he can, comes out this past week and he's like, yeah, Nick Sirianni's really the only coach that's ever coached me before outside of the guy from Oklahoma. So like, I mean, what is that? What does that mean? Does that mean that like Nick Sirianni's teaching him some really fucking cool shit? Or does that mean that he's basically had to start over from square one? Even though he played last year, he's basically a rookie. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. I just think the Falcons and I'm pretty sure in Atlanta are home. Yeah. I was going to say they're home in Atlanta. I, I think the Falcons are going to win this one. I think the home field is going to be like a big deal to some of these, like really like, I don't know what the word would be like these teams that really have a home field advantage because all last year there was basically i mean not really full capacity crowds get a team like atlanta in the dome first time the fans are back i think it's a big deal yeah i mean traditionally traditionally eagles fans travel really well but that's still going into atlanta there's probably there's going to be way more falcon fans than there are going to be eagles fans I, I don't know. I don't I don't think this is bodes well for the Eagles. I, I I just can tell right now that I'm gonna be very, very upset and watching the game on Sunday. Atlanta's defense is dog shit. Absolute dog shit. But Atlanta's gonna be able to put up some points here. Right. I'm not liking it. <laughs> I'm not liking it. Well, how many games are the Eagles really gonna win? Uh so what? There's 17 games this year. I, I mean, I, I'd give them seven and ten, seven and ten record. Maybe seven's high. Maybe eight, nine is I being think, nice. I think seven's high. Oh, uh, you probably I think they're a last place team in this NFC East. Well, I think they're going to lose the Cowboys twice, but I think they'll split once with the Giants. They'll split once with the with the Redskins, I think. I don't know who else is on their schedule. Let's see. But I would I would call this game probably a coin flip game. I would lean Atlanta. But I could see the Eagles getting a win. I think the, the Falcons defense is so bad that... They, they might start 0-3. No, they might start 0-4. They might start 0-5. They might start 0-6. What's the... Rec- what's the ske- Name me the schedule. Falcons could win. They could, could win, but I'm not feeling good about it. I I would. Like, I don't, I'm not. I'm not locked in here. I'm thinking like they got a chance, but I'm. Yeah. Like I said, I I think Atlanta's like no slouch here. Atlanta, 49ers. That's a loss. Yes. Cowboys. I've already said the Cowboys are going to sweep them this year. So that's that's three right there. Okay. Chiefs four. Oh boy. Panthers five. Buccaneers oh boy. six. Oh boy. Then fortunately. Raiders, Lions. Okay. Okay. Chargers. That, that'll that be a loss. But the Broncos, that's borderline. Okay. Saints. Giants. The only real win on the schedule is the Jets. That's the only confirmed win. They got a, they, so they got a week, they got a win week one. Or this gets ugly quick. Yeah. If they don't win week one, it's they're they're zero and what six did I say zero and six? Yeah. <laughs> like unless someone fucking shoots Patrick Mahomes several times in the face, not even just once, they'd have to shoot him like seven fucking times in order for them to lose. Oh, and that that's teams. that's an Andy Reid game. He'll run it up. Andy Reid will run that fucking bitch up. And it's the Eagles are home, so yeah, he'll run it up. Oh, he Especially will fucking high. run it up. I mean, the only reprieve is, I mean, 49ers are coming across the fucking state, you know, the country here. Maybe that gives you an edge, but I still don't see them winning. No. At 
at Carolina. I and to be honest with you, again, traditionally, I ever since like 2000, I think it's been like 2004. Two, when was the last game at the link? 2003. I, ever since 2003, the Eagles have played the Buccaneers terrible. Uh, because I think we played them in the regular season in 2003 and we beat them. And then was that a Brad Johnson game or a Sean King game? I'm not sure, but I know they played them in the regular season and the Eagles won. And then we played them in the championship game and they beat the shit out of us. The very last game ever played at veteran stadium and they beat the shit out of us. And then ever since then, we've had terrible luck playing the, the Buccaneers. No matter how bad they were, they fucking beat us with Josh Freeman. That's a throwback. Yeah, think about it. That I, I remember fucking, uh, what was he? He was... um. They lost with Foles. He was, was North, Northwestern's quarterback. Josh Freeman was Northwestern's quarterback. Kansas they State. brought him in. Kansas State. Kansas State, Kansas State. Oh, whatever. Yeah. I remember it was a perfect. They lost with Foles two years ago, right? Or three years ago? Whenever the fuck that was. Uh, yeah. After they won the Super Bowl, they yeah. played the Buccaneers week two. They got hammered. Yeah, Foles played terrible in the first half, and then he was okay in the second half. They came back, but uh, Deshaun Jackson had like twelve touchdowns. It was uh, it wasn't good. Like I said, they they play very poorly, like, except for the Panthers. They play very poorly against the uh, NFC South. Um, All right, Chad. Uh, anything else for week one? I think this is a good show. This fucking kill me now. They're going to go 0 oh, and fucking 6, dude. I Like, fuck, football's back. But just just promise me. Here. Just promise me if they go 0 oh, and 6, we're not talking about the Eagles every week. Like, at some point, just, like, cut them out of your life after it's, like, 3, you know? I don't know. It depends <laughs> depends on how badly they lose and what causes it. Or fucking I don't know. Maybe Nick Sirianni's the new next the next fucking Bill Belichick. I don't know. Hopefully. Oh, this is not going to be a good year. Uh, alrighty. I'm this I'm starving. So I need something to eat. I'm I'm looking forward to football though. Okay. I'm. Yeah. I was looking forward to football until I looked at the schedule. Um. <laughs> yeah. So uh, check out Patreon. We or oh actually before that. Uh, I guess we should announce it. I don't know. Not really an announcement, but uh, starting next week, we are going to have a producer again. Um, I don't know. His name is just Dave, apparently. I don't know anything else about him, except that his name is Dave. Uh, <laughs> yes, his name I, is Dave. I'm assuming he's an intern because I've never never interacted with him on the site before. So I would, have, I would assume he's an intern. So I know exactly two facts about Dave. His name is Dave and that he's an intern. <laughs> Um, but he's going to start be our producer this week. Uh, I asked him if he wanted to do it today, but it was kind of last minute. So I was like, Hey, you don't have to, if you don't want to. Um, so we'll see how he does. Uh, other than that, like I said before, go to look, go to our Patreon, check that out, donate, get whatever the prize for that tier is. Uh, check us out on Twitter, Vendetta underscore media. We have the, what's the one, the Vendetta podcast, Twitter handle. Yeah, let me look that up. Okay, while he does that... Oh, uh, I got it for it. Pods underscore Vendetta. Pods underscore Vendetta for all of the podcasts that go up on the site. You got Trey, you can follow at Trey Daubert. You got me, you can follow at Low Footed. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, check us out on Facebook. Go ahead and like us there. Uh, follow the Instagram page. Uh, that one, I don't know what it is, but you just search for Vendetta Sports Media. It'll come up. You'll find it. Um, what else? Uh, if you haven't already, Twitch. Oh yeah, we got the Twitch channel. I've been Trey, doing some gaming stuff. You're pretty twitchy. You're over there with uh, Godfather, Godfather right now. Godfather right now. Godfather. Uh, whatever Jackson's doing is usually up on there. The Tandemonium is live now on Twitch. You can you know you can uh, ask them their questions in the chat if you wanted to talk about something with them on the on the show. Yep. Uh, also. You know, now that the NFL season is back, I, I can't think of a more perfect time, if you haven't already, to go to a uh, monkey knife fight and just start hammering in some of these fucking bets. You know, we've already told you that, you know, that that line for the for the Panthers game is looking pretty good. 
that should be easy money right there if you bet the Panthers. Yeah, bet some Robbie Anderson touchdowns. Go on Monkey Knife Fight and bet some Robbie Anderson touchdowns. Yes, Robbie Anderson scored 20 fucking touchdowns on Sunday because I have him in fantasy in both leagues. <laughs> I would use him in both leagues. Um, Well, actually, my my wide receivers in the other league, maybe not. Or actually, you have to pl- you have to play Robbie Anderson against the Jets. I don't know, but I've I've got AJ Brown and Cooper Cup in the other league. Cups I, maybe, against the Bears, though. Yeah, I was gonna say, but like I said, I don't know because if Matt Stafford goes off, then maybe I would be sick starting Cup. But yeah, against that defense, maybe I, I should sit Cup this week. Um, but anyway, like I said, go go hammer the the bets on Monkey Knife Fight because. You know what? Like I said, it's the perfect time with the return of the NFL season to use promo code Vendetta if you haven't already, because you're going to get a $100 match uh, right off the bat. So if you bet $100, you, they'll match the $100. So basically, you're getting $200 that you can bet with right there. Or no, you're you can bet. You know what I mean? You get they're giving yes. you a hundred fucking dollars. Don't don't make yes. me sit here and try to do math on my day off. Um, also, uh, if you haven't already, check out Symbol because you can play the stocks with your favorite, your favorite uh, professional sports teams. You know, if you want to buy the stock on the Eagles, I don't know why you would, but maybe it's really cheap right now. Uh, Symbol's got you. You can use again code Vendetta. Um, <clears throat> code Vendetta. That's going to get you uh, ten dollar, ten dollars off. I don't know if we're still doing it, but if you go to uh, our shop. We were we were trying to raise money for a good boy. Yes. The goodest yes. boy. Max needs new kneecaps. Um, so he got he, a surgery too. He did get a surgery. He's in recovery. But you know, the buck doesn't stop with the surgeon. Max still needs new kneecaps. Um, so go go buy a t shirt or a tank. The unk or crop the big top. Unk, big unk, big unk crop tops or tanks. And we're gonna give all that money to Max. So if you like dogs. Or if you hate dogs, but you still want to pay for a surgery, go help them out. Go help out Max. Uh, Other than that, I think that's all. So I do want to say thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.